Good morning. My name is June Van Bastelaar, and um, I am the chair of the worship committee at Port Elgin United Church. Uh, Reverend John is away this morning, but we are very pleased to introduce some guests who are going to be speaking to us about housing for all. We have a small committee of people from the Port Elgin United Church and also the uh, Southampton United Church who have formed a committee. Our main uh, objective or mission is to um, make people aware, to be ambassadors for housing for all. So I'm pleased to uh, introduce Reverend John Lougheed, the Deputy Vice Mayor of Sogging Shores, Mike Myatt, and John Van Bastelaar. And Mike and John uh, Van Bastelaar were members of the Mayor's Task Force for housing, attainable housing. I'd also like to thank Alison Stevens for being our le reader this morning, George and Susan Brown, who are in the AV booth, and Jenny Robinson, who traveled from afar through some not so nice conditions to be our music leader this morning. So welcome. I'm going to read a prayer after Christmas, which is provided by the Vancouver School of Theology. In love, O oh God, you tear open the heavens and come down. You come in fail, frail flesh to dignify our lives and hallow your world. You come as friend to the friendless and forgotten. You come to bear our weakness and make all things new. You come to show us that you will not be God without us. In these days of subdued joy, strained patience, and flagging hope, strengthen us by the good news of Christmas come. Assure us of your love through the word made flesh in a manger. Let his life resound in our kindness and care for all creatures and creation. Your reign come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd ask you to join with me in the call to worship and to, to read along in the print that is in bold. We gather as a congregation of Port Elgin United Church with local leaders and neighbors in Christ. We gather on this first Sunday after Epiphany, recalling the Holy Family for whom there was no room at the inn. Though angels and shepherds, the magi and the animals of the stable recognized and gathered around them. As we behold your light, O God, revealed in your Son Jesus, May we ponder anew the Christmas story in our hearts and lives, including the housing needs of our local community. Let us worship God. Please join in singing our first hymn from Voices United, number 376, Spirit of the Living God.
going to read a breath poem by Christine Walters Painter. This breathing in is a miracle. This breathing out, release. This breathing in, a welcome to the unseen gifts which sustain me each moment. This breathing out, a sweet sigh, a bow to my mortality. This breathing in, a holy yes to life. This breathing out, a sacred no to all that causes me to clench and gasp. This breathing in is a revelation. This breathing out, freedom. And we will take a few moments just to breathe in and to breathe out. Please join me in a prayer with words adapted from Room at the Table by Carrie Newcomer. Gracious and loving God, the Christmas story reminds us anew that there is no room, there, that there is room at the table for us all, and no gift is too small. There's enough if we share and invite others to pull up a chair. There is room at the table for everyone. Let our hearts not be hardened to those who are living on the margin. This is where it all begins. This is how we gather in. Too long we have wandered, burdened, and undone. Let us sing the new world in. This is how it all begins. After all, there was room in the stable. Encourage and sustain us in that epiphany. Amen. Please join us in singing the hymn, Spirit, Open My Heart, from More Voices, number 79. Joy and pain of living. 
living as you love me I love in receiving and in giving spirit open my heart Well, good morning. It's good to be with you today. My name is John, and I'm one of the voluntary associate ministers at Southampton United Church, and we're really glad to be working with Port Elgin in the town on the Housing for All project. Before the service, Mike and John and I were talking about housing, but June and Allison and I were talking about Christmas pageants. So I thought I'd just offer a little reflection on that. I'm mindful that COVID means we can't even have people in church, let alone our houses, let alone have a Christmas pageant. But out there in our virtual congregation, how many have been in a Christmas pageant, or directed one, or remember a funny story about one? I think the one I remember best was as a student minister, we had a little girl who really wanted a speaking part in the pageant, but she was really shy, and the person who was directing thought, I don't think she can remember a lot of lines, but I think she'd be perfect as the innkeeper, because she only has one line. So we had several rehearsals, and by the second or third one, the prompter who was sitting sort of out in the middle of the aisle was ready because the little innkeeper would welcome Mary and Joseph to her doorway and then just look at them with longing eyes. And the prompter is whispering in a stage whisper, no room at the inn, no room at the inn. But the little girl just stood there. They said, I think it'll be fine when she gets her costume and we've got a full congregation, we'll try that again and she'll get the line. So this time they had their tea towels on their heads and their, their uh, house coats on in their costumes and Mary and Joseph came up to the little innkeeper and she stood at the door and this time she looked even longer into Mary and Joseph's eyes. And the prompter was trying to get her attention and finally the little girl just put out her hand and said, Oh, come on in! <laughs> and a little child shall lead us. Good morning. Our first reading this morning comes from Psalm 27, reading verses 1 to 5. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then, I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent, and set me high upon a rock. Our second reading can be found in Luke chapter 2, this morning reading verses 1 to 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths 
and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. May God grant us understanding of his word. Good morning to our group of eight today and to all those out that uh, will be viewing us later on this afternoon. My name is John Van Bastelar. I've uh, been a member or a citizen of uh, Port Elgin and Saugeen Shores for many years and it gives me great pleasure to talk to you today about housing and the needs within our community. First of all, uh, a couple years ago in 2020, Mike Myatt had a vision. He asked a group of us to please come to the library and could we work on some sort of housing document or task force that was approved by council. We all sat there, there was very few of us at the time, but that started at the first of the year. I don't, ima I don't remember the exact day because things moved quite rapidly. But by the end of the year, we had a housing task force put together with some over 30, 40 recommendations, all by dedicated people that really wanted the help in this area. So the purpose of our, our mission, and June alluded to that at the very beginning through the church, but also we want to get out to the community that we are going to make people aware, accept, and think about housing for all within our community. This is so needed, and it's something we need to all be aware of. And that's gonna be our mission. You're gonna see our faces many times, hopefully, this, uh, this year talking about this topic because you need to think what are who are our essential workers who are our essential people who are our citizens in our town and what do they need to live in this town and that is our purpose so i'm calling on mike myatt now who's the De vice deputy mayor of soggy and shores a task that he has had in his mind that he needed this uh, brought forward and with the support of council and staff has brought us a long ways, and now he will talk to us about housing for all. Mike. Thank you, John. I just want to thank you, John, and uh, for your contribution over the last couple of years as we worked on the the Attainable Housing Task Force, and it's it's an, uh, an exciting initiative, and uh, you know we uh, we we simply have to make things happen in our community in terms of finding um, suitable housing for all in Saugeen Shores. And June, thanks for organizing today and uh, really appreciate it. And, and John, I know you're sitting on this new committee too with the two United Churches in Southampton, Port Elgin, and, and it's uh, going to be a strong voice for, uh, for housing in our, uh, in our, in our community. You know, our current search situation in Saugeen Shores is, uh, you know, I, I view as, as, as dire. Um, you know, you take a look at the Bruce County housing wait list. Uh, there's a, there's a, a wait list of about 600 uh, families looking for housing. Um, in, in Bruce County, 300 of that 600 is right here in Saugeen Shores that cannot find uh, uh, attainable affordable housing. Uh, when you take a look at a vacancy rate of one half of 1% uh, for apartment and rental units in a community, it's, um, yeah, that's, that, that's not a big number. And, and, and rental rates have skyrocketed and, and people simply are finding it difficult to find a place to rent uh, here in Saugeen Shores. Um, in my view, too many residents have moved outside of this community to, to Hanover, to Walkerton, to find um, you know, suitable, affordable housing. And um, I, I met with, met with a good number of couples um, you know, during the Attainable Housing Task Force process, and, and they said to me, Mike, you know, we've moved to Hanover, we've moved to Walkerton, uh, we, we found an, a, a two-bedroom apartment for, uh, for $1,200. And I, and I said, well, could you not find that here? Well, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars we could find a, a unit and we had to move out because we needed that three, four hundred dollars to live per month. It just became non reachable. So we uh, we have a we have a problem here with, with our community. We have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to fix it. Um, you, you consider a, a household family with you know forty thousand dollars per year in total house, household income. Uh, and they're paying uh, $1,800 a month, $2,000 a month for rent, it doesn't leave a lot of money at the end of the month. Uh, and uh, 
So I, you know, I feel for those people. I came from, I came from a family of seven, and um, I told the story a little bit earlier. My mom and dad were blue-collar workers. They, uh, my mom worked in a cleaning motel rooms, and in off hours she waited on tables uh, at you know, local restaurants. My dad was a custodian, and worked night shift at Legion to to make ends meet. And uh, but the reason I tell that story is because. Um, I remember clearly as, as, as a youth um, in five, six, seven years of age, the neighbors, residents reached out. We, we, they helped. They helped us find housing. We were able to, to find the accommodation that, that, that we required to, to, to live. And uh, so, you know, there, there, there are needs like that. There, there are tons of families that I've met during the process with the Attainable Housing Task Force uh, out there that, that are hurting dearly. We don't see it a lot sometimes, but you know, when I when I when I hear of stories of people living in behind Walmart and on cots, and 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 the number of people that are being put up in motel rooms in the winter time because they haven't got housing here in the community, they can't afford to live. That's that's a scary situation, and it's an unfortunate situation. We need to fix that. I uh, the uh, community support, in my view, is is, is vital. Simply put, um, Soggy Shores needs more rental accommodation. When you take a look at that one half of one percent, there's not a lot of rental units, and hence prices skyrocket. You know, it wasn't that many years ago the average household price of Soggy Shores is about four hundred twenty-five thousand dollars for a new build. Today, today, uh, the average household uh, cost for a new build in Soggy Shores is seven twenty-five, and that's happened in three years, three to four years. Housing's gone up from from four twenty-five to seven. 25 for a new build. That's not reachable for a lot of people. Uh, there are people in our community who will never be able to afford a new home. Uh, but we need to give them the basic needs, the basic uh, living needs and living accommodation, and that's with, with, um, with, with suitable rents that they can live in. Um, I, this is not, not, not the stereotype, but I, I ask members of the community and members of the congregation to think about this for a minute. And, this, and again, it's not about stereotyping. This is about uh, meeting the needs of our community and, 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 and having the services that we require, we'd like to see in our community, be provided. Think about it. Think about the next time you drive through Tim Hortons or Wendy's or Harvey's or Swiss Chalet. Think about that, that takeout that you've ordered through a local restaurant. Who, who's serving you? It's, it's those people at $15, $16, $17 an hour that, that can only find accommodation in $1,800 for a two-bedroom apartment? Think about that number. It doesn't leave a lot of money at the end of the month for people to live on. So we really do need to open our minds, open our hearts, and when we hear about rental accommodation being considered in our community, it might be, it might be near your backyard. It just might be. But I think that we all are in this together. The provincial government, the federal government, Bruce County, the Town of Saugeen Shores Council, our residents. This, we, have, we need to all work on the solution uh, to bring attainable housing to our, to our residents. As I mentioned earlier, uh, at the, the end of the month, some of these people um, in, in our community, and I saw it firsthand with the Attainable Housing Task Force, and broke my heart in a lot of ways to see people and how, how they're hurting. and. Uh, we just need, need to open up our hearts and minds. And again, when, we, when you hear about that, that new rental accommodation unit coming close to your neighborhood, please, please, please consider that these people need a place to live. And um, it, it may be close to where you live, but that's okay in my view. Um, there's one, one family I spoke to, well, we spoke to a lot of families, and I'm going to ask George here to load up a, you know, a video that uh, one family um, um, talked to us about their situation, a local business person, considering moving out of town now because they may be removed from their, their rental unit because, uh, because housing is just, uh, their, their place may be sold and, and the prices here are just are, are too high. So, George, I'm going to ask you to call, uh, bring up the testimonial. Uh, it's pretty enlightening. Hi, uh, my name is Karina Fleming. I am a 35-year-old woman that owns a pretty successful business in Saugeen Shores. Um, I am currently living in a three-bedroom apartment with my two boys. 
Um, I would love to be able to purchase a starter home for us because we live in a loft and we don't have a yard or anything like that. Um, but the prices in Zogging Shores are insane. And if you own a small business or you're self-employed, um, it's pretty much impossible to get a loan for the type of housing that is around here. I don't foresee myself ever really being able to afford it uh, unless something drastically changes um, in my financial situation or the housing market. Um, yeah, that's pretty much my story. Um, the apartment that we're in now is great, but my landlord is trying to sell the building and if she does sell the building, we will definitely be without housing and I am not sure that I could even afford a rental space for the prices that are in the area. So thanks very much for listening to my story and that's pretty much all I have to say. Thanks. And that, that, my friends, is it's just one of many stories in the community that I heard during that, that one year we spent with the Attainable Housing Task Force, and John alluded to the 30 to 40 recommendations, and um, there is help on the way. I, I really am optimistic. Uh, we've, we've been dealing with some land developers locally that are saying that they're, they're planning on bringing in a, a fair number of apartment units into our community. Um, but one thing to build apartment units it's another thing to uh, provide those rental units that are in the eight hundred, a thousand, twelve hundred dollar uh, rate for the one, two, three bedroom, not the eighteen hundred, two thousand, twenty two hundred dollars, which is, which is being seen now. So, we're working on it. There's a lot happening in, in behind the scenes. Some de the land developers are listening. Uh, we have a meeting with Boos County housing staff coming up this week to talk about how we might be able to partner with Boos County to uh, to take a look at some new housing for our community. So, we are working hard. I just want to leave you with the, the final message, and I've, I'm repeating myself here a little bit. Please, please open your minds, uh, open your hearts to uh, when you hear about that next development that's being planned in our community for housing, uh, a two, three, four, five-story apartment unit. Um, there are housing needs in our community. We have very few units available. We need more rental units, and hopefully in the process we'll help drive those prices down and uh, keep those so precious residents uh, that, that are thinking about maybe leaving because of high rental rates, let's keep them here right in Soggy Shores. Thank you for, for listening, and you're going to hear lots about housing in the next little while. Thank you, Mike. And I just want to... Uh follow up with Mike, uh, the council of the day with Mike's help. has certainly done uh, a lot for housing within our community so far to date. They've changed some of the bylaws, they've seen, uh, changed some of the um, regulations within our town to help this and they've been doing a really good job. But they can't do it all on their own and it's up to our community to help this council and to get involved. That's why I'm calling this back to our purpose, is to be aware, accept, and think about housing. We need to be aware of housing as a community. We need to be aware of people coming into town, new people, professionals, people that have good jobs, cannot find a place to live. They will go to somewhere else. And these are young people with families, a component of our town that we need. We have essential workers in our community. As Mike alluded, who are essential workers in our community? There are people that are make our deliveries, help our services, help professionals administer their services. These are essential folks within our community that are not making the top dollars, but require housing. And you gotta remember, these people are needed. Don't forget about our seniors. Seniors in town, some of them want to downsize. If they don't have a place to downsize, just think if they did have a place to downsize, it'd be a win-win for everybody. They could get into a smaller community, into a smaller accommodation, and we would have more accommodation for younger families into the bigger homes. We need to think about seniors, what we can do for them. And family members who want to stay, what about family members, our sons and daughters, grandsons, granddaughters, that would like to work in town, stay in town? We heard a story where uh, a family had to lose their son because they had to move the Hanover to afford housing. That's an awful thing to go through. 
We need, <clears throat> also we found uh, there's a wide spectrum and there's a huge segment in our community that need food, shelter, and a place for support. The, these are people that are unfortunate sometimes, they not a choosing of their own, but they need assistance. We need to be aware of this assistance need and we need to support it because these people are happy with what they get and they would love to be accepted by the community. And I've had experience of this through the food bank and on, I was on the Lynn, had of, uh, experience with mental health. There's issues within our community, we have to address, address all these issues. So we need to be aware of it. And the next thing, we need to be accepting of this situation. We need to support the community. We need to realize this has to happen in our backyard. It must keep our sons and daughters in town. People will get good jobs. Seniors want to downsize and stay in town. We need all types of housing, not single residence housing, all within town, close to all our amenities. So accept that this is necessary. And then the last thing I want to highlight, think of what you can do. What can we all do? <sighs> I can see this coming. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I, mean, I mean, a lot of people need help. And I really do think that as a community, we need to work with this. So please help everyone. It's essential. So in closing, send in your suggestion, ask the questions, get to know your community. Hit Mike and I up in the community if you want. We'll talk about it. John will help. He's part of our, our uh, Reverend John, part of our community. We have a great committee. You're going to be seeing a lot of us working on this. Thank you very much.
welcome you today. This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today. This is your Or as the little innkeeper said, oh, come on in and be part of all that is possible and needed in our community. As we come to an offering time of time and talent and treasure that we contribute wherever we are in support of this congregation and its wider work to help build up the kingdom of peace with justice that Jesus came to proclaim. Try that again. They say in life there's no dress rehearsal, and that's also true with worship. I've adapted the pastoral prayers this morning from uh, my colleague, the Reverend Stephen Milton, who serves at Lawrence Park uh, United Church in Toronto at this COVID Christmas time. I really like some of the things he had to say as if he was speaking to this theme this morning. Mindful that our focus has been on local housing, we'll conclude with the words of the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray. Loving God, as the Word, you existed before the universe began. You chose to become one of us as Jesus. You walked as one of us, felt the rain on your face, hunger in your belly. Did you cough, too? Did you ever get sick or get a fever? Did you know the worry that comes with sickness that might be all around you or not having a place to call home? Your family certainly knew what it was to be told. There is no room at the inn. This morning in particular, we give thanks for the leaders of our town of Saugeen Shores and local faith communities, among others, who are working together to guide us through COVID and to raise awareness and provision of housing for all, to accept and to think about that. So today we pray for a sense of your presence with us, O God. Be in our hearts and in our bones, for we are worried for ourselves, for our loved ones, for strangers. In the papers, we read about COVID numbers that don't seem real, let alone housing numbers. How can this be happening? We pray for patience and for strength. We ask for your spirit to guide us so we can make wise choices and help our community and those around us, those we love. In the silence of our hearts, O oh God, we pray for those who struggle in body, mind, or spirit, those who care for them, including on the front lines of health care, and we pray for those who grieve. Indeed, we pray that the fear and anxiety which swirls around us will not blind us to the beauty of this world. Help us to continue to feel the Christmas spirit. Let us experience the childlike wonder when snow falls or Christmas pageants happen. We pray for an expanded heart, which can think of others as much as ourselves. We think of those in hospital today, those seeking affordable homes those who have homes who worry about others, 
We pray for refugees and people in shelters and those who are homeless. We extend our thoughts and love to people who cannot see a future. Word of God, Holy One who lived in our flesh, be with us now in spirit. Have your way with us. Guide us through this difficult time. Let your love guide us like a star that led to Bethlehem, where there was room in the stable, and there can be in our hearts and communities and the wider world. Recalling how Jesus taught us about your mothering love, O God, we pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Going out to serve others, we sing, May the God of Hope Go With Us in Voices United at 424. Rest and abide with all of us and those we love and serve and remember this epiphany season and evermore as we go now in peace. Show. Sure. 